be a good day. Even if I make it myself, it's gonna be a good day. I don't need no one else. I'm gonna have a good day. Nothing wrong I could do. I'm gonna have a good day. Hope you have a good day too. Good morning, I'm Trish Pahanik, and this is Synopsis, your first early morning briefing. It's Thursday, April 17th, 2008, and here is today's top story. With Earth Day coming up on April 22nd, a couple of media enterprises have launched New Green initiatives. Next week, NBC Universal will serve up more than 100 hours of green-themed content across its 42 NBCU properties and 28 websites. NBCU also announced it would designate two other Green Weeks in November of 2008 and April of 2009. Both efforts tie in with NBCU's Green is Universal initiative with the intent to raise awareness among consumers about environmental issues. Fox also began a public service campaign this week called Green It, Mean It, with TV commercials featuring stars from such Fox shows as House, Bones, and Back to You offering eco-friendly tips for viewers. We have more coming up next, and remember, if you had a promo or a commercial in this video, we would all be watching your stuff right now. Coming up next today, under more good stuff, Lifetime launches another HD channel, finale numbers from Deadliest Catch and Workout, Discovery presents new documentary series Frozen Planet in 2012, and final notes and observations from our excellent European adventure. Lifetime Networks introduced Lifetime Television HD, its second high-def channel behind Lifetime Movie Network HD, which launched last year. Two distribution deals were confirmed with AT&T Uverse TV and Verizon Fios TV to carry the new channel. Featured programming on Lifetime HD will include Lifetime's Army Wives and original movies. Tuesday night's back-to-back -back season premieres of Discovery's Channel's Deadliest Catch series, uh, it aired at 9 and 10 p.m., captured 3.4 million and 3.5 million total viewers, respectively. And also on Tuesday night over on Bravo, the network aired the first season finale of The Real Housewives of New York City at 10 o'clock, which attracted 1.06 million adults 18 to 49 and 1.43 million total viewers. The network just announced the series was picked up for a second season. Also this night, the third season debut of Workout, which aired at 11 p.m., tallied 593,000 adults 18 to 49 and 764,000 total viewers. TLC introduces a revamped Thursday night schedule on April 24th, starting with the Season 5 premiere of Overhaulin' at 8 p.m., new episodes of American Chopper, which begin at 9 p.m., and the return of Miami, Inc. at 10 p.m. Discovery Channel is teaming with the BBC Natural History Unit on a new documentary series called Frozen Planet, slated to premiere in 2012. Over eight episodes shot in high def, the series will explore the ecosystems and animals of the Arctic and Antarctic. This series will chronicle never-before-seen wilderness and animal behavior as the Russian Arctic region has been off-limits to filmmakers until just recently. Very cool stuff. Well, some final notes and observations from our excellent European adventure. We touched down in New York yesterday around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and it feels good to be home. We were away for a total of 11 days, first to Cannes and then to Ven Venice. Both beautiful destinations, uh, despite the cold weather and the rain, which seemed to follow us everywhere we went, and there were certain aspects of both we found particularly appealing. Now, in Cannes, the dogs are generally much, much smaller than they are in Venice, which they're pretty big. The bread is much better in Cannes, and the people People seem friendlier there. You can easily walk almost everywhere or simply hail a cab if needed. We really enjoyed taking time just to sit and people watch in one of the numerous and always open cafes and begin to understand the French way of thinking. Sitting and sipping your coffee or eating your lunch is always better than doing it on the run. MIP TV was definitely a working convention with lots of business being done, deals being written. Now, in Venice, it's much more scenic in all directions, no matter where you are, and taxis can be much more fun, uh, but a little bit hard to uh, find at times, or identify, and the house wine in Venice is much better. It's also much easier to get into trouble in Venice and harder to get around because street signs are optional. Everyone rides a three-speed Schwinn bicycle, whether you're 5 or 95, and gelato is much as part of the day there as coffee is, no matter how chilly it is outside. Open cafes at any time of the day aren't as prevalent like they were in Cannes, which is too bad given the great people watching you can do.
The Venice Festival of Media was interesting, geared mostly towards advertiser agencies and creative folks, focused all on the business of working within the digital space. While it identified numerous questions, the festival's numerous seminars over two days were not able to answer many of the questions and, and dilemmas faced. Uh, perhaps next year that'll be the directive. If pressed, I'd go back to both cities at any time for sure. And on that note, that's a wrap for this Thursday, April 17th. Be sure to check your email for the full printed version of today's synopsis with new executive moves and more on ratings, plenty of new classified ads, and a few of the stories that didn't make it into this podcast, and of course, tonight's primetime broadcast lineup. The music in synopsis was composed and performed by David Stango. This podcast is a synopsis media production in association with 311 West. For Cynthia Turner, who wrote and compiled synopsis in Connecticut, back and safe, I'm Trish Pahanik. I'm going to have a good day, even if I make it myself. I'm going to have a good day. I don't need no one else. I'm going to have a good day. Nothing wrong I could do. I'm going to have a good day. Hope you have a good day, too.